All right, so let's go all the way back to March, whenever everything was shut down. What was your all's initial reaction when you hear that we're all going to have to go home and everything? Um, well, for me, it was like obviously terrible timing. So I had an injury right when all this was happening. So I was already out. Um, so I was like walking in late, like getting rehab. And then I walked in, everyone's like, oh my gosh, did you hear that? I don't even remember who the first school was that shut down, but they were like, did you already hear that they canceled? And so it was just like a ton of unknowns. And everyone was like, wouldn't that be crazy? Like if we just didn't play spring matches and it was just like all these what if, what ifs, like, yeah. holy cow, that would be nuts. We go to spring break and then like, we just don't come back for months. And so it was just a lot of what ifs at first. And then from that point on, like more schools started to shut down and um, more people started making all these calls and we were like oh shoot like that really could be us so just like a bunch of what ifs and then it just turned into like uncertainty from there like we went away to spring break and then just had no clue when school is going to be back when volleyball is going to be back if we're going to be able to play our matches um just a lot of uncertainty i guess still same thing yeah. but for sure <laughs> yeah what about you madison um yeah i think um i mean i was at the lodge eating training table when um basketball got canceled and so yeah. everyone of course there was freaking out and we were just like oh there's no way right like there's there's no way I mean we're we need to play Louisville we need to like get the show on the road yeah. we need to start team practice I mean yeah. so I was kind of skeptical I was like no yeah. um and the second that like word broke I was like okay cool like we can go home for like a week and then I was like wait no this is awful I miss being in the gym um and it was painful because we had no idea when we could get back um and i since i've been in college have not gone that long without seeing my teammates being in the gym um, being in lexington so it was a huge adjustment period um but now that we're back and we most of our team has been back i think we're all a lot more grateful for for what we're able to do together so so like uh i guess al you first again uh, what did you all do in quarantine i guess to uh keep up the keep you all in condition for volleyball and uh, just keep practicing stuff like that. What did you all do? Mm -hmm. um, so coach Spurlock, our strength coach, he was really good about sending workouts every week. Um, so that was the fitness aspect. And then the volleyball piece, like I said earlier, just a ton of uncertainty. So um, coach Skinner, he, every week we would have team calls, sometimes just like your position and sometimes your class, like we tried to mix it up. Um, but he always asked us, like, what are some things that you're doing to keep up with fundamentals, keep up with your um, training? So whether that's, like, for me, uh, it was just, like, rehab. Like, what, and then it was just my hand. So I was able to do footwork still. I was able to, you know, do arm swing stuff. So it's just, like, little things like that. And we were all bouncing ideas off each other. So just how can we keep up with strength and conditioning and then fundamental stuff? So it wasn't, like, him telling us, you need to get in the gym and you need to serve 100 balls. It was just, like, little things. Um, keeping up with footwork and things like that. And our coaches were awesome with, you know, giving ideas, um, looking things up for us to do. Um, so that really helped a ton. Madison? I think, yeah, I think um, a way that we kind of integrated compet like competition um, was we had small groups and then every week after a full week of workouts, we would send in like what we did, how fast we completed certain workouts. Um, and we would send like the amount of reps that we got under a certain amount of time. So that kind of helped us um, keep our competitive juices flowing, I guess, just because um, most people weren't able to get into a gym and um, play. So that, that was kind of a way that we mentally stayed t sane um, with competition. But I think it was really nice because the coaches were obviously very rational knowing um, certain states had more restriction than others. So um, it was a good time to revisit fundamentals, like Stumler said, but um, it was also just now I have a complete new appreciation for being with my teammates and training with my teammates and working out with my teammates. It's after you go for that long working out alone, it's pretty tough. I mean, you definitely tap into a lot of self-discipline that you need to have. Um, but yeah, I mean, being back, it's a whole nother level of appreciation. So. So Ali, you mentioned you were uh, injured. Have you fully recovered now? Or are you pretty much fully going through the voluntary workouts and stuff? Yes, I am back. I just got released from my doctor last week. So we're all good. I have one more week of PT, this pump on that. Um, but yeah, we're good. Volleyball is back to normal. So ready to get going. 
Yeah. yeah. All right. So I guess one last question uh, involving quarantine. Were you all, I guess you said you all stayed in touch pretty much once a week. Did you all uh, go back home where you are from? Like I know Madison, you're from Kansas, if I remember correctly. And then uh, yeah. you're from Indiana. Allie, did you all go back home? Um, did you stay uh, like in your house on campus probably in Lexington or uh, what did you all do? I um, was in Florida, so I we have a place down there. So I went down there for spring break for a little bit. And then obviously when we found out that we weren't going to be coming back for a little bit, we just stayed down there. And then I had to go kind of back and forth with um, thumb rehab and things like that. So I was back from Lexington for a couple of weeks, and then I would go back to Florida. So it's kind of what kept me sane. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, Matt? mine was less glamorous. I was just in good old Kansas. Um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you really got to learn to enjoy the little things in life. My parents and I started playing categories, yeah. Scrabble. Um, we really broke out all the all the board games possible. But yeah. it was good. It was a good time. I think it was funny because I drove back um, early June for workouts. And my parents were like, this is so weird. It's like you're leaving for college all over again. It's like you're 18 again. and Because normally you're never home for that long. Yeah. Um so it was nice looking back. Um, I like definitely appreciate that time in the moment. It's like, wow, I'm kind of losing my mind. Like love you mom and dad, but Holy cow. I need some people my age around. me. <laughs> but yeah. so let's talk about, you mentioned the arriving back. So just explain to me how the initial testing process went out. If I remember correctly, you all got tested for current infection and also the antibodies. Uh, yeah. Just talk about the initial process. Um, I don't um, remember if you all, I don't think any of you all tested positive, right? I can't remember totally. But just talk about the, uh, I guess, the testing process and And just getting back into practice and voluntary workouts and stuff like that. Um, So the antibody testing, um, pretty simple. That was just um, blood things. We all had to get that. And like you said, nobody showed up positive for that. So that was good. So that kind of helped speed along the process. Um, everyone kind of came back in waves. So there were six of us who originally came back and then, um, everyone else kind of came back. There were like three different waves that people came back in. Um, and you had to wait till all your testing and physicals were done and then wait, um, forget if it was two weeks or how long it was. And then you could start working out or maybe it was just that full week, but then you could start working out um, we just started like bare minimum weight. We just did all technique stuff, um, a lot of just conditioning, getting everyone back and healthy. And then once you were back for two weeks on campus, then we could start open gym. So they just wanted to make sure that our conditioning and strength and everything was up to par just to prevent injury, um, things like that. So, but now everyone's back and um, we're able to get in the gym and then hopefully this week we can get the coaches in there and get going. But yeah, just a lot of, like you said, testing, little things that we had to get done, which can be kind of annoying. But like Madison's been saying, we just have like a new perspective on things. We're like, no, we're here. We get to do this. Um, it's not a, I don't think anyone kind of has that, oh, we have to get tested again kind of thing. It's like, we know that things have changed. So like, just suck it up. Be grateful that we're even on campus. Some sports aren't, some schools aren't letting their students come back. So we're just really grateful and just taking every day, day by day, a lot of unknowns still. Um, I mean, not really. It's pretty, pretty cut and dry when it comes to COVID testing, but, um, every day when we come in for workouts, um, it's a temperature and then we fill out surveys prior to, um, arriving at either workouts or open gym. So, um, we're kind of still navigating how to make it the most efficient with still obviously, um, covering all the guidelines, but, it's honestly at this point just become second nature. I was watching film the other day actually. And it's like, wow, it's so crazy to see all of us without masks on and see us just like so close and like touching so much, but we've been really disciplined as far as masks up, keeping distance, um, especially with equipment. We've been really diligent about not sharing. Um, so I think up until this point, uh, I've been impressed with how, efficient we've been and I know we'll continue to do so once we get into individuals so how often are you all tested is it uh twice a week once a week for recurrent infection you know yeah uh, they haven't sorry I should yeah sorry that was my fault Ew, go ahead. no you're good we're um they actually got tested so I came home um but so I'll get tested on Tuesday they got tested on Friday 
And then we obviously got tested for the first time whenever we got back on campus. So I think we're starting to get on like a more regular basis um, with that. But yeah, that was our second test right. this past week. So I'm getting tested on the 16th, uh, the day after I move in on the 15th when I get back. So I, I mean, whenever I first saw the video of how you get tested, it looked extremely painful. I didn't want to do it. But I've heard people say that it's just uncomfortable. It's not that bad. Would you all say it's just uncomfortable, not that bad? Well, we get tested. So have you had strep or have you ever been tested for strep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get tested in our throat, not our nose. So it's very similar, I think, to a strep swab, if you will. Uh -huh. um, maybe a little more thorough. Uh, mm -hmm. They definitely, it's not like an in and out situation. They definitely are swabbing you. <laughs> so it's not, it's not comfortable, but... I don't think it has the negative reviews like the nose one does. I've not heard great things. Yeah. So if that's the route you're going, I can't give my two cents on that, but I'm sending my crossed fingers that you just have to do the throat one. <laughs> have to get through it, yeah. Well, okay. So whenever we do, all of us get back on campus. Uh, actually, let me back up real quick. So while you all had been uh, in quarantine, obviously, just not really going anywhere, uh, but you're practicing. What have you all done in the meantime? Just kind of uh, when, like I said, when you're not practicing, and are you just hanging out, going places, like on a, uh, maybe like uh, going on walks somewhere? Like what? What are you all doing to pass the time? Um, for us, like you said, a lot of walks. We're taking a lot more walks. Like at first, it was just me and one of my roommates there's usually four of us but it was just two to start those first two weeks um so we we're just like walking a ton um some of us are in classes i'm not but a lot of my roommates are so they're keeping up with that stuff um i think i know madison's like journaling um doodling things like that i am not the most creative so i picked up golf um i love <laughs> yeah tennis me and Maddie Breslitz can, you know, pick up some tennis. We love that. So it's trying to do new things. Obviously, those are things you can do and keep your distance. So, and actually stayed open during quarantine. So those kind of were nice just to try new things and get outside. Yeah. Yeah. I've um, been reading a lot. I'm flying through books right now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, really, that's kind of my extent. I let Allie co cover the whole, like, athletic yeah. I'm just taking a back seat I'm reading yeah. books I'm journaling a lot um, I've made probably like seven trips to Michael's within the past two weeks it's kind of <laughs> gross I'm like accumulating this massive scrapbook collection yeah. um, but it's kind of cool because you get to tap into areas of either creativity or like Ali um, who knew that she'd be a stud at golf I mean you you learn new things about yourself through mm -hmm. times like this so I think that's kind of the silver lining. I had no idea that I loved like creating things and drawing and just like sitting down and losing myself in a book for four hours. Um, so it's been cool to kind of just navigate new passion, I guess. Yeah, I played golf one time this summer and we didn't even keep score because that's how bad it went. But uh, anyways, oh. I'll um, move on uh, to, let's see here. Yeah, so. Yeah, so what I was going to ask you all next is basically whenever we get back on campus, um, what is, like, my class schedule personally is, like, some online, some hybrid, uh, some, uh, I have one, one completely in person. What is your all schedule like? Are you all mainly online, or what is the plan, basically? I have three, as of right now, I have three online and two in person. I'm an education major, so a lot of my classes are starting to be um, more like hands-on stuff. So actually in the classroom with kids. Um, so a lot of those have had to kind of be moved to online. One was a hybrid and then we filled out surveys and people were like saying that they were a little uncomfortable just being around all the kids and stuff. So they moved that to an online setting. So we'll be in like pods, um, and, like there'll be one of us with like three students or something. So we'll get to like teach them um, and work with them for probably like 20 30 minutes and then we'll like bring it all back in do like class discussion so uh, for me like i said you're going to be around a lot of kids so it's kind of hard and people just aren't comfortable um being in that setting yet so i think i personally feel like a lot of them will be moved to online but as of right now it's two in person and three online what about you madison 
Um, 